Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches and to a very very long fix video. Uh, I know some of you guys enjoy this, I certainly did, because we had to do with a super rare, super expensive, super sought after Benross LED watch this time, which is a rarity on my channel. Uh, so yeah, here is the Benross pop-up LED watch uh, repair and uh, boy, it, it was a fix that I haven't done before, so the procedure is something new on the channel. Uh, yeah, grab a bite to eat, relax and enjoy this video. And here we are with the watches on the bench uh, because there are three watches that I was sent uh, to fix. Uh, I've already managed to fix one. There we go. Cycles through all the functions and is consistent. Uh, and now I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So because I fixed the, this one, diagnosis is already done. Um, so yeah, now a bit of talking about what was wrong. Don't skip this because I know you will have questions at the end. And uh, I hate answering questions in the comments that are already explained in the video. So a bit about the construction. This is how the module looks like. Focus, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Uh, and you can see that uh, uh, we have a chip, not not many components. We have the uh, integrated circuit, which is the brains of the watch. We have the crystal oscillator, a trimmer cap. Basically, you can adjust the watch uh, from this knob. If it goes too fast, you can slow it down and vice versa. Uh, and we have a few caps around and uh, that's it. Uh, we have nothing on the bottom. Uh, we have a fairly standard uh, LED display here. Uh, the unit is highly contained into this IC. So nothing much that can go wrong. I've already ruled out uh, the caps being the issue. Uh, I've already ruled out uh, the oscillator being out of sync or any bad traces. So the only thing really uh, left uh, to be the culprit uh, is the integrated circuit, which was the case for this watch. And I briefly inspected the, the boards for the remainder of the two. And I concluded that, yeah, this needs to be changed. So that's the fix in this uh, case. We need to swap out the integrated circuit unit with a working one. Also another issue that I found is that because of the construction choice uh, to have this uh, LED display at a 90 degree angle uh, with the board, the connections here uh, sometimes fail. So uh, in case we have any of those failures, I will just refresh the solder joints uh, to make sure they are nice and conductive. Now I know one of the big questions in this video will be where do I get uh, a new integrated circuit and the answer is I really don't know uh, it depends uh, on when you watch this video um, so yeah I managed to source some for a seller that I've already dealt with before and I knew he came into possession of a lot of uh, Ben Ross uh, LED watch modules which uh, he thinks they were never used but he had multiples and uh, I had to buy a lot uh, it wasn't pick and choose uh, but I did found that Hold on, where is it? I did found out that uh, the inscription on the chip, you can see there is, uh, there are two numbers, 3959 and 7618. 7618, I think it has to do with the date. 3959 was the common one on multiple uh, watch modules, so I assume that that would be the chip. Uh, as you can see, these, this one doesn't have uh, the 3951. Uh, this one has it. And you can also see there is a difference in the prints uh, in the traces, how they look uh, in this area versus this area, and even here on the top, they're a bit different. So I'm assuming that this chip has maybe some different logic, I don't know. But I found out that 3959 works. So all you'll see in this video uh, is me <laughs> removing a chip from uh, this board, which is faulty, and then uh, exchanging it with this chip uh, focus which is working so not much to see uh, but yeah I didn't put out a video in a long time so this uh, might be straightforward easy right right so let's get to work and if you have one of these and you're wondering what the fold looks like well uh, I'll briefly insert batteries in uh, and uh, it either yeah there we go it either displays some of the digits uh, it's not responsive to button presses, only resets. Uh, then there, that's an IC issue. 
And the first thing we're going to have to do is remove the IC from the donor module. And we're not going to use a hot air station because we would be cooking this uh, IC and I don't know where else I could find these. The way that we are going to remove it is I am going to go ahead and just cut these traces and then gently insert a, a sharp screwdriver and lift the module out. But first we have to take down this protective shroud. There is some work we have to do on this module as well before we attempt anything else. Um, and I did notice that we have one of these uh, springy things missing. Actually, these are the buttons, so it needs to have two and there is one missing here. But I do have another donor watch because I was sent three watches and I'll just have to see uh, if I can reuse one or rebuild one. Um, but this tells me that somebody else has been here before uh, attempting to fix things. But anyway, uh, the work we have to do here is uh, just so we can uh, remove this and add the new IC, we're going to have to take down this shroud and uh, remove the LED display as well. So we're going to do that now. Now it's time to remove the LED display and the, mm, 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 mm. again, uh, there is some type of glue here. I don't know if you can make it out. Let me get in closer. And I'm trying to give you a better shot here so you can see that it's not only solder on those uh, pads. I don't know if you can make it out. Oh, there we go. That's that's some type of glue um, over the solder. Hmm. I managed to remove it, and uh, whoever glued this into place, uh, I, I I speculate that they might have known about the issue I was talking in the beginning that the joint between the LED display and the board is a little fragile and he just threw on some glue in there and I don't know what he used but uh, inhaling it wasn't pretty. We are at the point where we're going to remove the broken IC from the watch that we want to fix. And we're probably going to have to do some cleaning, but I'm pretty happy with that, how that came off. A lot better looking and ready to receive the new IC. And now for what it seems is the home run, which actually is not the home run, the last stretch or however you want to call it, is to place this chip here and solder it into place. Uh, it's a bit of a pain because uh, even with the LED removed, you still have tight spots. Right now it's time to do some soldering. You won't see the entire process because it's hard for me to film uh, and uh, solder with my naked eye. Uh, and I don't have a microscope camera uh, so I'll do a few and then do the rest uh, under the microscope. And after an hour of painstaking work 
here are the joints. Some better depending on uh, how much space I had to work with, but I'm happy overall. Now, I'm, now time to do the all important test. Keep our fingers crossed, but wait, what am I saying? First I have to fit in the LED, yeah. So one tip on how to get this at 90 degree, first you set it in uh, at fairly what you th uh, think is 90 degree and then just apply some solder on that point there. Yeah, this is better. So right there in the corner, that joint is not for uh, signal sending purposes, just to hold it in place. You apply some solder to that first uh, and then uh, you kind of gauge if it's at 90 degree. If not, you just reheat it and uh, move it slightly with your finger until it's in a 90 degree, degree position. So now it's time to see if this works and uh, I saw somebody commenting on one of my other videos that this is scripted, but let me tell you something, it's not scripted, but in this case I'm not that anxious because one has already worked. This module has three volts, so I just need to connect the plus, oh, and we have a one, can you guys see that? And uh, where's my tweezers? So bear in mind that, okay, Saturday, we're holding the module upside down. 12, those are the seconds, yes. And uh, let's see if we can trigger the watch. There we go, 113. So yes, this is actually working. Yeah. Well, uh, it wasn't surprised. I, w I wasn't surprised because uh, I follow the same steps I did with the watch that is already working. And here's the bigger brother. All functions as they should. Very nice watches, very expensive, very rare. Uh, now it's time to case this module. Oh, but wait, not actually, not yet. Uh, I need to install one of the other uh, contacts. Well, these are the contacts for the buttons and you have two. This one is to adjust, uh, sorry, cycle through the functions and the other one is to adjust them or to trigger the watch. So one is missing, the one for the watch trigger is missing. Uh, and luckily the person that sent me, sent me three watches to fix. Uh, but apparently I'm missing one of these in this watch. So I'll just take one from uh, the last not working module. And now it's time to fit the module in the case and the entire watch, uh, here we go, uh, is not made of that many parts. Uh, the module is a self-contained unit, then you have a gasket and the back cover all fit into this uh, case. And this fits into this uh, unit that has this uh, spring that pushes up the watch uh, because it's a pop-up watch, yeah. Uh, and here you have the release mechanism, which is pretty simple. Uh, I did disassemble this and check it. I'm not going to bore you with that. What I did here was uh, stretch a bit this uh, the spring that's inside the pusher uh, because it was a little bit loose, uh, tightened a bit the screws. So yeah, 
Assembly is a straightforward affair. Nothing complicated. for this. If I had the band I would have to fit the band at this point then just uh, install the spring bar and then uh, when you install this just make sure that this uh, lip if you will uh, catches stays on the inside like that. And you almost don't need a tool for this. There we go. I'll just check the mechanism. Yep, that seems to be holding on pretty well. Uh, let's get a couple of batteries and see if uh, this is uh, working as it's supposed to when we press it when we press the button. Okay, so apparently I don't have uh, the correct batteries. These are 1120s and you need 1130s for these. Uh, that's why I have in this one. But uh, this is on test, so I don't want to uh, remove them. But I guess it has to work with 1120s as well. Um, because they're a little shorter, if uh, there are shocks, <laughs> it might lose contact. Come on. Okay, there we go. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and it works. Uh, and the way to test that uh, you know I soldered in that contact, well that contact is a very sensitive component because if you don't uh, set the correct height uh, the watch will either not turn on when you pop it up um, or it will act up. One way to test that you've put the correct height, uh, you've set it at the correct height is to make sure that it turns on when you uh, press this and uh, to cycle through the functions uh, see the week, uh, day, and uh, the seconds and the date. You just have to gently press it. Yes, that's perfect. So let's wrap this up back uh, in front of my watches. So there you have it. Uh, sadly, the watches won't be staying in my collection because they were sent over by somebody who wanted a fix. Now, uh, I know I'm going to get lots of questions about uh, getting fixes in. Uh, it's not something I typically do. I usually accept only watches that uh, are worth making a video and this certainly was the case. Now, regarding the fix, regarding to the fix, um, yeah, what, what can I say? Uh, it wasn't complicated. You do need uh, a spare uh, integrated circuit. The procedure of removing it and replacing it uh, isn't that difficult. Only, 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 the only thing you need to do is have soldering skills. Uh, so, uh, yeah, sourcing it is the complicated part. Um, and by now the watches are already in the in uh, the owner's hands. So I, ha I hope he's happy with the fix. Um, and uh, what can I say? We are close to 10,000 subscribers. So I started doing new videos again because I've been really, really lazy. Uh, but hopefully I will ramp up things. Uh, but I always say that and <laughs> it, it only happens for a brief period. But anyway, if you like this kind of content, if you like digital watches, this is what I do, reviews, fixes uh, and anything in between. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.